Hey, this is Andy Brown. I'm the head instructor at the Climber School of Real Estate in Orlando, Florida. So I'm going to go over a little broker pre-license exam stuff. It's a, a little bit math, but it also has to do with some formulas that you need to know. It has to do with analyzing investment property. And I know for some of my students, it, it tends to kind of uh, mess with their head a little bit. They overthink it. So I, I just want to show you, I want to show you the formula and the flow. So first of all, all the investment property analysis starts out with the basic, what I call the flow, which is the income capitalization flow. So it goes like this. Potential gross income minus vacancy and collection losses gives you effective gross income effective gross income minus operating expenses gives you NOI net operating income and that's very important that's the basic flow one of my instructors likes to teach, please visit every other night. I teach it as please vacuum every other night, mainly, you know, for the janitorial service in the building. I would love it if they vacuum every night, but then I got to get the O in. Now, one of the things I always make a point of, of showing is none of this involves the mortgage payment because the building does not care how you acquired it doesn't care if you pay cash, the building doesn't care if you've got a good loan or a bad loan. It's going to make you this much money and cost that much to operate. But mortgage payment is very important. So here's how mortgage payment is important. From NOI, now you subtract your annual mortgage payments. In the world of commercial or investment, it's called debt servicing. So you subtract your annual debt service. And then that gives you before tax cash flow. Well, it should make sense. If you got to pay it to your bank, you're not going to keep it in your pocket. I like it when my students sort of get an internal understanding of this, not memorize it, because it really ought to make sense to you. Now, from before tax cash flow, you're going to subtract your federal income taxes, or what you have to pay Uncle Sam on your IRS statement. And that gives you after tax cash flow, which again ought to make sense. That's your cash flow after you pay your taxes. All right, so now the question is how do you calculate federal income taxes? Well, again, you start with NOI. Think of NOI as the magic number. I mean, really, that's what people care about. Now, this is income, and to get NOI, you subtracted operating expenses. One of your operating expenses is called reserve for replacement. It, it, it's a true, genuine expense when you're analyzing an investment property because it has to be in there. You know things are going to break down and you are going to have to spend money to fix or replace it. But to the IRS, it's income. I mean, you, you earn the money and now you earn it, but you didn't spend it. So you always add back in your reserve for replacements. You took it out, now you're adding back in. But now they let you, they let you write off some stuff too, which is nice, especially with investment property. So as part of your annual debt service, they actually let you deduct your mortgage interest for the year, so you, you, you subtract your interest. And, and then they let you write off your depreciation. Now, depreciation is a fake loss. You didn't really lose it. But the IRS likes to pretend like it is loss of value, like a true loss. So, right, it's a freebie. We'll take it. When you have your NOI and you add back in reserve for replacements and you subtract the mortgage interest and subtract the depreciation, 
that actually gives you your taxable income. That's actually what you're going to be paying the IRS taxes on. Now, how do you know what your income taxes are? It depends on your tax bracket. In, in real life, you know what your tax bracket is. On the state exam, they will tell you your tax bracket. And when you take your taxable income and multiply it by your tax bracket, that gives you your federal income tax. And especially in real life. I'm sure it's not the most fun thing to do, but that is what you're going to send off to Uncle Sam via the IRS. This goes right there. Now, next thing, how do you calculate depreciation? Because they might ask you for that. Well, depreciation for your exam is going to start off with the purchase price. What you paid for it. What you paid for it. But one of the cool things is they actually let you add back in acquisition cost before you take the land out. I want to remind you, you can't depreciate the land. You have got to take the land out. And they're going to give you a factor. So I'm going to add back in the acquisition cost. The state exam, they're going to give it to you. In real life, you let your CPA handle it. There you go. So anyways, that becomes the, uh, I, for, I'm going to call it the, your depreciable building basis. All right. From here, you got to take the land out. Now, what the problem is going to give you is something called a building ratio, or they may tell you the land is worth 20%. If the land is worth 20%, that means the building is worth 80%. If they give you a building ratio of 0.8, again, that means the building is worth 80%. So you either take the land out or multiply by the building ratio. This actually gives you your depreciable balance amount. Yeah. This is what you get to figure your depreciation out, which remember is like a, it's like a fake loss. You're just saving money on your tax return. Now, it really depends. Is it residential or non-residential? It's up to the problem, really. If it's non-residential, which it usually is, it seems like on the state exam, your depreciable life is 39 years. If it's residential, it's 27 and a half years. Well, all you do is you take the depreciable basis and you divide by 39 for non-residential. If it's residential, you take your depreciable basis and you divide by 27 and a half and that gives you your allowable annual depreciable amount that you are now allowed to write off. It, co it comes out of your taxable income. You don't pay taxes on it and your taxes will be lower, which will increase your after tax cash flow. So if you can get good at this, and again, I would love it if it would just become kind of a natural flow. It's going to help you on the state exam, but it'll help you in real life too. I, I hope that helped you. I really do. If you have any questions, contact me, 407-822-3926. If you feel like it, I'd love if you'd stop in. Uh, maybe you want to take an extra pre-license class here. Um, uh, maybe you want to come to our one-day broker exam review. We do it every single month. It's fantastic. I'm going to tell you what you need to know to pass the state exam. Tell you some of my tricks. And uh, definitely come to your post-licensing here at the Climber School. We have a great post-license class. You will love it. But either way, good luck on your state exam. I'm going to let you just take a look at this for a little bit.